Now, it is a well-known fact of the channel that I was a massive fan of the original Exodus Ultra from Saucony. These shoes got me through lots of challenging miles, including when they were brand new, straight out of the box, 80 miles in Dura 24, but they also helped me to the finish line of the super tough TDS at UTMB last year, and boy, was that a race. Uh, I've never had any irritation, any rubbing, any issues, and not a blister to speak of when I've been running in these. So, as you can imagine, I had my fingers crossed really tight when we got our hands on the updated Exodus Ultra 2s. Uh, happy to say I took a big sigh of relief after that first run because the shoes performed really well. Since then I've got lots of miles into them so let's jump into the video and find out how they performed. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Thanks for joining us for another video and it seems like a long time since we brought you guys a full in-depth review on the channel. So I think I can just about remember how to do them. First up, we're gonna give you a few specs on the new shoe and then we're gonna break down the construction in a bit more detail. So the new Exodus Ultra 2 retails in the UK for 145 pounds. Weight-wise comes in at 302 grams in a UK 9.5. Still runs off that six mil heel offset. So we've got a stack height of 32.5 mil on the heel and 26.5 under your forefoot. When it comes down to sizing, I've found it true to size with average width and volume in the toe box. As far as the construction goes, it's only had a very subtle update this time round. And in fact, the midsole and the outsole are identical to that original version. And Saucony have just made a few subtle tweaks when it comes to the upper. So this time round, they've utilized this lighter, more breathable engineered mesh fabric. And it's got some big perforations worked into that midfoot section and they're there to aid with airflow but also to make that upper feel a lot more breathable when you're running in hot conditions. We've got some structural overlays working around the shoe starting at the heel and then finishing up wrapping around that toe box. Good levels of protection from a substantial toe bumper there and the lacing system has slightly changed in the Exodus Ultra 2. So Saucony have added these two extra eyelets up the top there and that's just to give you a bit more personalization when it comes to lockdown. The thin gusseted tongue design is very similar compared to the previous version, so not a massive amount of padding, but I've always found it pretty comfortable. We've got that sort of elasticated membrane across the top to try and keep debris out. And there has been some subtle changes when we take a look at the ankle collar. So it does feel a little bit softer, a little bit more forgiving, very similar levels of padding though. And Saucony have added in this stitch line that wasn't there on the previous shoe. And then finishing up, we've got a handy pull tab on that tongue and on the heel just to make it a bit easier to get in and out of the shoe. Working our way down to that midsole and we've got that same dual compound setup. So by that I mean it's constructed using two different types of foam. So internally you get a core of Saucony's performance based Power Run PB and that's going to provide you with lightweight maximal cushioning, high levels of energy return and durability and then on the outside surrounding that you get this stability cradle of the slightly firmer Power Run run foam. That's to enable uh, the Exodus to withhold and stand up to running on tough, challenging technical terrain. And finishing off with the all-important outsole, and like I said earlier, there's been no changes made here. So you still get that multi-directional pattern with a 4.5 mil lug depth. That's there to give you good levels of grip and traction on a big mix of terrain and underfoot conditions. It's been clad in Saucony's very consistent gripping power track rubber, and if I hold up the shoe to the camera, you might just be able to see poking through that outsole, we have Saucony's flexible rock plate. Uh, that's there just to offer the foot a bit of protection from sharp rocks or roots when you're tearing it up on the trails. So you can see not a lot of changes have been made this time around and I personally think that was the right thing for Saucony to do when it came to the Exodus Ultra because it wasn't just me who liked and enjoyed running in the shoe, I spoke to lots and lots of runners out there on the trails, whether it be in training or racing, that really enjoyed the feel and performance of this shoe. So let's get stuck into how it's performed over the last month or so and 
moment. A little bit of a spoiler here, I'm glad to say it's run really well. Firstly, let's talk all about the things that haven't changed and one of the standout features on the original shoe had to be that dual compound setup and I personally think it offers the perfect blend of comfort from the cushioning, a connection because you haven't got a deep stacked midsole under your foot, and finally, performance from that Power Run PB foam core worked into the center of that midsole. I've always been a fan of Sockney's rock plate, whether it be in these or the Peregrine, and because it's nice and flexible, it doesn't compromise that midsole when it comes to flex or performance. But then if you have to run across a, a section of really sharp, rocky trails, definitely gives you good levels of underfoot protection and you really feel the benefit. Outside performance has been nice and consistent. However, it is only a 4.5 mil lug depth, so it does struggle with a bit of loss of traction in the muddiest and boggiest of conditions. Uh, it's not terrible or bad or anything like that, but you do just have to sort of tread a bit more carefully. Uh, the rubber compound, really consistent on all surfaces that I've run. Uh, I have spoken to a few viewers and, and they said that they really struggled when they took the original shoe out on wet, rocky trails uh, with loss of grip. And I can honestly say I have never found that in the Exodus Ultra. And I've always felt very confident when running in wet conditions. I think we came down to the conclusion that it might be certain types of rock that this rubber struggles with. Moving on to upper performance, and I personally think this newly designed upper has a hard act to follow because the upper on the original Exodus has to be one of the most comfortable on a trail shoe that I've ever run in. Uh, no issues when it comes to blisters, hot spots, irritation, like I said earlier, even when I ran the TDS, these shoes never came off my feet for the whole 97 miles, 9,100 meters of elevation in some pretty bonkers hot conditions. And my feet felt great as I crossed the finish line. So really happy to say those subtle tweaks maybe have made the upper perform even better. Not that I had an issue with lockdown in the original shoe, but I think it's even better. Feel very snug, very secure at the midfoot. That new ankle collar setup fitted well, feels nice and comfortable. And then that new lightweight, breathable engineered mesh, especially with those perforations worked around the midfoot, definitely make this shoe a lot more breathable to run in. Again, the ankle collar seems to be one of those areas of contention when it comes to the original shoe. And I did have a few viewers mention that the, that the ankle caused them a bit of irritation. Uh, I definitely never had that in the original shoe. So I'm hoping that these sort of subtle changes are gonna stop those issues for some runners. Definitely feels nice and soft, but I also think that the depth or the height of that ankle has changed slightly when you compare it to the previous version. So you can probably tell, I've really enjoyed my time running in the new Exodus Ultra 2s. And I don't know about you, but I always find it very frustrating when you find a running shoe that really does work well for you in every way. And then the brand comes along and makes a few changes. It gets an update and it never performs the same again. And I am very happy to say that it hasn't been that case for me this time round. Now, if you're new to our full in-depth reviews at the channel, we like to get some scoring done when it comes to price, comfort and performance and durability. So let's get stuck into the scoring and we're gonna start with the price first. With the Exodus Ultra retailing for 145 pounds here in the UK, so there hasn't been any price increase this time round, which I always think is a really positive thing. I actually think that's a fair price for a trail shoe that performs so well and is so versatile. So this shoe could literally be run all year round on a big mix of different terrain and underfoot conditions and over any distance. It's also a good price when you compare it to some of the crazy things going on in the running shoe world at the moment. So because of all these things, we're going to score the new Exodus Ultra 2 from Saucony a solid 8 out of 10 when it comes to price. Next up is comfort and performance and clearly the Exodus Ultra 2 has to score high for me because it is definitely one of the most comfortable trail running shoes I've run in for a long time. But I also love the fact that it's very consistent and versatile when it comes to its performance. So you can take these out, run a short, sharp run and feel nice and nimble, nice and connected, or you can lace them up and go and run 100 miles and you'll feel comfortable in every way. And that's a pretty hard thing to achieve with a trail running shoe design. So again, it's gonna get another high score and we're gonna give it a top performing nine out of 10 for comfort and performance. 
Last to score is durability, and I personally always find this a hard thing to do so early on in a running shoe's life, but I have to say, it looks like it's holding up to the miles really well. No early signs of wear on that upper at all, and the outsole is holding up well. And if we take the original Exodus when it comes to durability, I've done 400 miles in this shoe. Upper still looks good. Uh, there is a few battle scars, and I have lost a couple of lugs on the outsole there, but there's still plenty of miles to be run in this shoe, and the midsole actually still runs pretty good. So I think uh, the new Exodus Ultra 2 is gonna hold up well, should be pretty durable. So again, we're coming in high and we're gonna give it a well-built nine out of 10 for durability. So tallying all those points up, the new version of the shoe comes in with a deep sigh of relief, 27 out of 30. So I'm sure that really makes all those Exodus Ultra lovers out there very happy. Now, we don't like to score looks at the channel when we're doing a review, but we definitely like to talk about it. And let's be honest, the original Exodus Ultra was a bit of a dog. I think it was definitely at the back of the queue when it comes to looks and design. And it was all a little bit dad shoe. So happy to see that Saucony have showed the new version some love. And I really like the new design and colorways. Obviously, this isn't at the top of the list when we buy a new running shoe, but no one really wants to run in an ugly shoe. So when it comes to the new looks, new design, new colorways, it is a big thumbs up from us. As far as any other trail shoes that might compare when it comes to sort of fit and performance to the Exodus Ultra 2s, another shoe that I've been really impressed with this year, the uh, Hoka Mafati Speed 4s, again, give you a very similar trail running experience. And now that the new Peregrine has had a big update, uh, the two shoes aren't a million miles apart. Uh, obviously the Exodus Ultra will give you a bit more cushioning in the midsole and there is a bit more width and volume in the upper. But with that new update, the performances of the two shoes has been brought a lot closer. So time to wrap up our full in-depth review on Saucony's latest trail running offering with a quick conclusion. So if you're in the market for your first ever trail running shoe or you're looking to upgrade your existing model and you kind of want that one-stop shop when it comes to your trail running shoes, you want it to be comfortable comfortable over distance, but you still want it to be exciting and nimble when you run those quicker, shorter runs. Uh, you also want it to be able to handle a big mix of different terrains and underfoot conditions, then I'd say look no further. And the new Exodus Ultra 2s from Saucony are definitely worth a closer look. So there you have it folks, hope you've enjoyed the video, really hope you found it helpful. I've actually left a link in the description below for the new Exodus Ultra 2s if you do wanna check them out in a bit more detail. Uh, don't forget, if you have found this video helpful to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do and it is completely free, but it is a massive help. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that bell icon because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. Also, if you'd like to support the channel even more, we've got some great merchandise available at runforadventure.uk, including our Believe and Achieve range. We've got some real premium hoodies and tees, and we've got our new technical running cap available there. So don't forget to check that out at runforadventure.uk. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. We will be back here very, very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. These shoes got me through lots of challenging miles, including 18, 18, not eight. Yeah, including 18 miles. Yeah. <laughs> now it's a well-known fact that I was a massive, la 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 la. Now it is a well-known fact that I was a massive fan of the original Exodus Ultra from Saucony. And these shoes got me through lots of challenging miles, including 80 miles when these were brand new, straight out of the box at Endure. <laughs>